Greetings and salutations, everybody. I'm Dan the Wolfman, and uh, everyone has liked my top five carrier revolvers. Well, today, things got a whole lot more interesting. We're going to be going over the top five micro compact nine millimeters, the most efficient, highest capacity to weight with size uh, ratio that there is. The ones that could be pocket guns and or four out of the five have longer barreled versions. Uh, so this is going to be really cool. I'm going to show you a lot of pictures. We're going to go over specs. I'm going to start with Ruger and then Smith, their own. The Ruger Max Listen to them first the and then we'll talk more. With maximum features. Just under an inch wide, six inches long with a three inch barrel and weighs about 18 ounces. It has an impressive 12 plus one capacity and it will conceal comfortably inside the waistband, in a pocket, or in a purse. Some of the features include this tritium fiber day-night sight to adapt to changing light conditions, and every pistol is optic ready for a micro red dot sight that will co-witness with your drift adjustable iron sights. It has a very comfortably sized grip with a nice medium texture, and when you put that 12 round magazine in there, it gives you just a little bit of extra room for your hand, not to mention the extra capacity. Ruger Max 9 comes with an optional manual safety. It operates just like a 1911, easy on, easy off. It's also available in a pro model. The Ruger Max 9 is built around a precision CNC machined fire control housing, it has a through hardened steel slide, and a hammer forged barrel for accuracy. To make the Ruger Max 9 your daily carry, visit your local firearms retailer or check out Ruger.com for more information. So guys, I gotta say, the new Ruger Max 9 looks very interesting. 10 plus 1 or 12 plus 1 uh, comes with both, or it can come with two 10-round magazines. Uh, so this is the first micro-compact we're going to look at, and we're also going to look at the others, and we're going to compare them. And then at the end, we'll wrap up kind of how I rank them, and that depends on your needs on your size and things of that nature how you're going to carry it is this inside the waistband for you is it outside the waistband for you or is it pocket carry for you or does it have to do dual duty pocket carry and inside the waistband see there the external safety two versions come with that uh one version is just the two 10 round magazines for uh band states and um there is a pro model, which all that means is it doesn't have the external safety. Now, what's great about this over others is it's probably going to come in at about a fifty to even hundred dollar lower price point when it really hits the street. Um, and it, all the models come optic ready, and all the models are coming with that high vis um, fiber optic slash. Uh, tritium night sight. It's a high vis light wave. I looked up the product number. It's a high vis light wave. Uh, there's mixed reviews on that on Optics Planet. If you go to all the different versions, there's some that like it. There's a lot of people that were not very happy with the quality of it. Uh, people that shoot it outdoors seem to like it. You see a lot of reviewers liking it, but shooting it indoors under fluorescent lights and kind of dim lighting. Even though it has the openings on the side, they're not really uh, happy with it. The rear, to me, looks like cheap plastic, and it probably is, so they can come in at a lower price point. Now, it is light, and it does look like this would be something very good, a pocket carry in a pocket holster, okay, in a good pocket holster. Um, 3.2 inch barrel, so a little bit longer than some of the 3.1 inch or 3 inch barreled options out there. But the fact that it comes optics ready and can fit a lot of optics, including on their list, it looks like the 507K would fit, which that or maybe I think a Swamp Fox would probably be my options right now. But I want that whole sewn option in case the ACSS reticle that I reviewed and loved eventually comes down to the micro red dot. Um, 507, you know, Ks and, and those size RMSC type footprint ones. So that's something to think about. And this one could probably do dual duty really well if you needed one of the thinner, lighter ones for office work carry in slacks. Uh, but you can get away with carrying a lot more if you carry in jeans. And they tested that with hollow points at Ruger. So that's good. Number four here, guys, the order isn't what the final order is. It's just so you can keep track. Here's an awesome commercial by Smith & Wesson.
Average is boring. Good is never good enough. Basic is fine, but not for you or for us. We demand more from ourselves, from each other. To protect what is most important to us. Each day, rising to meet what comes our way. We're the ones who persevere, driven to be more capable, more consistent. We set the bar higher, aim farther. More confident, more balanced. We make the nearly impossible possible. Over three million shield owners have spoken. Shield is back. And more complete. Way to go, Smith and shield Wesson, or whoever you guys for hired. That was a great commercial. That and the recent Smith Walter commercials. Hit it out of the block. Americans. Um, happy to see jujitsu in it as a jujitsu black belt, catch wrestler, and grappling black belt. I really appreciated that, though one of his entries on the armbar could have been a bit better, more weight over it. But I digress. Anyway, look how close it is compared to the regular shield. Dimensionally, it's the same, other than just a little tiny bit thicker in the grip, which for me, I'll like because I have XL hands and the regular shield in that millimeter especially feels a bit too thin to me. So there we're looking at the flat face trigger now with the dingus instead of hinged. A lot of people that grew up on Glocks didn't like the shields hinge trigger or the MNPs. And so now we're going to a much, much superior, even over the 2.0s uh, trigger uh, more like you would see with aftermarket triggers. And uh, it's the same size, so we can use the same holsters, I assume same sights, uh, you know, and it, the, the, the trigger is going to be the biggest difference besides the capacity here. The grip's texture, they toned down just a little bit, seeing a magazine comparison here with the 8-rounder on the right and the now 13-rounder on the left. So the standard 7 got bumped up to a double stack 10 from stack and a half to double stack, and the extended you're looking at here, it goes from an 8 to a 13. So 13 plus 1 is nothing to joke at. In all my videos you see for 9mm, I say I want 10 plus 1 a 9mm minimum, or I want 8 plus 1 a 45 minimum. That's just how I roll. So, you saw dimensionally it was very similar to the Max 9, and we'll discuss that later, but pay, pay attention to weights, and I'll show you some more later. The weights really depend on what version and what sites you get on the shield and the shield plus. So it goes a uh, little bit of take up the dingus and then a little take up and then to a nice defined wall with a crisp break. This is really quite a bit of a game changer. Uh, you're going to see me talk about some of the other uh, micro compacts later and one that's kind of close and a lot closer than you think it is. Not based on size, but based on width and by weight. So, um, anyway, I think it's a huge improvement of the shield. Now, MSRP is coming in about, you know, $50, $60 higher. Uh, there's already ton out there. I just looked and, um, at least at certain dealers and the prices for the base model is 489 or 499 at various retailers. Some probably charge shipping and handling. Um, uh, some don't, I'm sure, but 49 499 with the MRSRP of I think 559. I believe that's what they were on the base model. Uh, I pay attention only no safety models because when two muggers are in me, I don't want to pull my gun out and then get shot because I couldn't have the fine muscle motor skill to take off a tiny itty bitty safety. I actually want my gun to be able to do what it's intended to do when you carry it in a proper uh, pocket holster or a proper full kydex holster if you're a beginner. Uh, now we're looking at the 4-inch barreled version, guys. And now this jumps up from 18 ounces to 22 ounces. 
But if I wanted for inside the waistband appendix carry, I would want the four inch performance center ported barrel optics ready. Now, optics ready on these, it only comes with the optics, so you're paying for that. I wish Smith & Wesson would change that. And let's look at how it compares to another pistol, the long slide, to that. Next, I want to look at the Airx Delta. Look, it's almost the exact same as the 4-inch Shield Plus. So is it a micro? Maybe not. But if you look at width and weight and you look at the capacity, it's going to make you go, hmm, depending on how you plan to carry. If you're planning on carrying appendix or even in jeans, if you're a bigger guy, carry the medium. We're going to look at both the medium and um, your Samsung Large Gen 2. So now the Gen 2 is out and there's optic ready Gen 2 is out. Take a look. Function, all magazines locked back. The Delta has been amazing, guys. Uh, it really is uh, the best probably once I get used to it carry most efficient pistol hey guys dan the wolfman here I'm ready for my ac airx rex delta review the ultimate most efficient size weight width, height most efficient standardly awesome capacity ultimate carry gun really everyone says that but then they talk about 28 ounce pistols this is a 22 or 22.2 ounce two ounces lighter than a glock 19 1.1 inches thick so really it's like a single stack Glock 48 killer, P365 XL care, uh, killer. Thanks, please thumbs up, enjoy, subscribe. And again, not all pistols are mine. I have to sell most of my pistols during the pandemic. Size, efficiency, weight, thinness, height, all dimensionally to weight and capacity. It is really kind of the ultimate carry gun. Guess what, everybody? First look. But anyway, one of my friends calls me up, says, bring your gear, your filming gear, and get over to the range. So I show up, and this is a first look. <coughs> really, the first person uh, to get one, you know, on YouTube anyway, is my buddy letting me check it out. This is the Airx Delta Gen 2. This is the Gen 2 OR Optics Ready version. Comes with five plates. New grip that is pretty much stippled. Better traction on the sides than the Gen 1. It's not as hard. Some people got sensitive hands because it never worked. Uh, but much better traction. Good traction in the back and much better like skateboard tape grip in the front. The first look and first shooting other than Mr. Guns and Gear real short video at an event. But this is the first one really out in the wild. Um, so hopefully you'll like this. And of the Gen 2s, it looks like the L's are the first to ship, which is the G17 size. Oh, uh, optics ready. So as I was saying, G17 size, but thinner, smaller, lighter, much lighter. Especially the optics ready version. Metal sights. You can rack on the back sight. Uh, ambidextrous. So, more grip. Gen 2 even better than Gen 1, it looks like so far. It's the zombie apocalypse and Daniel from the uh, Fear the Walking Dead just pulled a gun at me from seven yards. Let's do three fast fives. You see all 15 were upper thoracic. Those were three fast fives. The Rex Delta L O R is pretty awesome. I mean, obviously it's the first time. I'd like to do a full review. This kind of was first impressions. It's awesome. I like the Delta. I, I like my friend's Delta. I like my friend's Alpha. Friend got the Delta L for large, like G17 size, but it's thinner. It's like two ounces lighter. It comes with optics plates. It's got metal sights. It's ambidextrous. It's already got a nice ergonomic grip with four different that actually fit nice because it's thin. It's as thin as a single stack. It's easy to carry. Uh, I think you guys will like it. Please thumbs up, share, look at my Delta, subscribe.
X Delta Gen 2L, ACSS Optic, good stuff. I want to thank him. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank everyone that supported. I want you to thumbs up. I want you to share. I want you to subscribe. I think that the uh, this is the ultimate package. Okay, P10 magazines, extensions. You got the ACSS. Please share, subscribe if you can. Support me on Patreon. The Gen 2 A-Rex Delta is amazing. I beat all the big channels. Thank you very much. That earns me a subscription. Help me out. Get down there in the comments. Let me know what you think. Thanks, everybody. Me guys, I was the first to review the Hellcat and the P365 both at the range, and we're going to talk about their extended versions, and then I wrap up all five of your micro compact, high capacity, most efficient again. firearms, depending on how you're going to carry it and what your needs mags. are. You can see how they line up. There. So, pretty similar. Pretty similar, guys. If you look at overall, pretty similar. Um, looks like more length on the uh, Springfield. Uh, if flat bases, guys, again, Springfield's actually a little shorter. So, for pocket carry, if I needed to put the smorter mag in, uh, if you were a smaller person. But me, I'm a big guy, 36, 38 jeans. Um, I'm surprised what I can do with this. Compared to the LCP. Compared to the LCP, but again, guys, these are big enough where compared to the PPQSC. So trigger, trigger reset, empty guns. Nice, very crisp ball on the Springfield. Take up, dingus, take up, dingus, take up. Very crisp ball and the break. Very crisp. Very crisp. Break. And here is the reset. Pretty short, but I like this very nice defined wall. I would say the Springfield has the better trigger. They both have really good triggers when you're actually firing them rapid fire for self-defense purposes. Empty. Take up. Again, this one's had like 5,000 rounds to it, I think, at best estimate. Take up. Fire and the reset there and fire. So both have good triggers. More defined wall on the Springfield, though new gun. And um, the P365 is a bit spongy, but still really good in my opinion. Guys, I'll pause it and see how we did. All right, guys, closest attacker, triple tap, Hellcat, Hellcat, Hellcat. The three shots from a different run I did earlier. Hellcat, Hellcat, Hellcat. That's all really good. Remember, this target's so small that even in the green zone is very narrow to my body. Um, even the green zone's a good hit. And the coup de grace at the end, perfect centered, center line headshot. This head, a real human head's about that high. It's a very short. Target on the right, one upper thoracic, perfect hit right there. Sorry about the camera work right there. And uh, the second one low, that's me, that's not very good. I wish that I didn't do that, but I did. And uh, third ba bad guy, 10 zone, as perfect as it can get here and here. So, Hellcat's very, very capable. I'll run it with the P365 next. All right, 365, three attack, a drill, same exact thing. I'm, again, not doing movement to keep things um, lower the very so I'm staying on the same line, staying in the same place. I messed up. I loaded one last round of 365, and yet magically somehow I knew that. I think I have to watch it back. Did I only double tap the first guy instead of triple tap him? I think so. So um, one's a perfect hit, and one's way down low. So not nearly as good 
as the three that were in here, three out of the four in here were from the Hellcat run we just saw. So not as good on the first target. The headshot also not as good I was in the jawline. Still messes up someone's day, especially center line, send some teeth in a bad places, uh, but might not be the immediate shutdown like that shot was. You know, pretty close though. Uh, Hellcat two were up here. 365, two were there. I give, I know scoring wise, this looks good. Maybe that's hard and that's a little low. Uh, I kind of like these better, pretty even. Maybe, maybe Hellcat slight advantage. And uh, these were the two Hellcats, remember? Perfect tens. I dropped the, the 365 shots low. So in this target, definitely better than Hellcat. Which one was better? You be the judge. I think that was true. The Hellcat is a hit. The Hellcat's gonna be a huge hit. It's more than capable, and I wouldn't be surprised if they make an XL or Magnum version with a 3.8 or 4.8 4 inch barrel version in the future. Thank you. Please subscribe. Guys, so which one you decide to get is really up to you based on your needs, your size, how you dress, your work environment. Is it for pocket carry primarily? Is it for somewhere on the hip primarily? And how do you carry? What position? This all matters as well as price point. Are you on a real low budget? The Ruger is going to take care of you probably pretty well. Um, do you want a little bit higher quality in some of the parts? Then, you know, the Smith looks like a really good option. Um, but once you start going longer build Smith with night sights and or optics cut the MSRP is really high. Eventually that's going to come down, but probably night or not right away. Uh, it's going to take a while. So, um, when you look at being able to get the Delta, cause people don't know that Eric makes weapons for, you know, militaries that you could get that for 465, 485 optics ready. In the medium, if you want a four inch barrel, if you want a four and a half inch barrel, which actually longer barrels, if you're carrying appendix, don't keel out as bad. Longer is better, not shorter. Longer ballistics is better. Three and a half inch or longer barrel, nine millimeters, a whole lot of ammunition does really good 124 plus B. Shorter than three and a half, the only thing that does superbly well is standard or plus P, even if you want the recoil, standard or plus P. 124 grain HSTs. So keep that in mind as well when choosing barrel length. But the fact that, you know, if you want a lazy man, easy man, lightweight carry nowadays and still have capacity to pretty much handle any situation outside of extreme outliers, the choices are amazing. You probably won't go wrong. Smith and Wesson Ruger, if you want to send me some, I've certainly done reviews on some of your other stuff. I would love to test and evaluate them. Um, and guys, I think I like the triggers on with the better, the walls being the Smith, the Delta and the Hellcat better than I do the mushy of the SIG and the materials and the mushy of the Ruger from what I can tell. So keep that in mind as well. And I think a beginner is a little bit less likely to negligently discharge with the three better triggers with more defined wall than the others. So guys, that's about it. Please thumbs up, share, subscribe, please smash that subscription and that thumbs up and the notification bell really helps me out. This took me literally like 24 hours to do. Thank you very much. And I'll catch you on the flip side.